So let's rank off the chapter by talking about osmosis. And before we talk about osmosis, we need to describe diffusion. And diffusion is the movement of molecules from high to low concentration. So if we've got some molecules in solution, and I'll draw them as little black dots here, and we got a whole bunch on this side. We have a high concentration on this side, and maybe we only have a few over here, so we have a low concentration on this side. Diffusion basically tells us that molecules are going to want to move from the high concentration side to the other. And the question is, how do they know they're supposed to move? And it turns out they don't really know they're supposed to move at all. So let's go ahead and pull up a website here. This is from the FET group, the physics education group at Colorado. And don't let the physics um, uh, worry you there. It turns out they do lots of animations for biology and chemistry. And right now I've got some blue dots on the left-hand side and some red dots on the right-hand side of a divider. They represent blue and red molecules. We can see that from the blue's point of view, it has a very high concentration on the left and actually no concentration on the right at all. The green divider, of course, stops the blue from going over to the right. We could say, I suppose, that the uh, they know they're supposed to diffuse when I remove the barrier because they know over here on the left-hand side, right, they've got a high concentration, and on the right-hand side, they've got a low. So let's just focus in on the blue for now. So high concentration to low, we know they're supposed to diffuse, but with the divider there, they can't do it. So let's try and remove that divider. And if we remove that divider, uh, there it's gone, see? So now we can watch those molecules, and we can see that they are now moving from side to side. Again, just focus on, on the blue. We can see that the blue ones are either starting to move over to the other side, and they are starting to flow from side to side. And uh, let's see if I can turn on this particle flow rate. And uh, yeah, we can see they're flowing from side to side here. And uh, they are gradually sort of spreading out. Also, if we look at the red molecules, we can see that they started out mainly over here. And when we remove the divider, they kind of spread out to the other side as well. So that is diffusion. So some people have talked about it as being like a drunkard's walk. So imagine you've had a few too many shots of whatever you shouldn't be drinking, I'm sure. And uh, you kind of stagger around and you don't really know which way you're going. And eventually you just kind of move randomly all about the place. And these molecules don't really know where they're going. But when they all start on one side, they really can't help but move to the other side. So now we know a little bit more about diffusion, so we can talk about osmosis. Osmosis is not just diffusion, so it really kind of irks me when people say, oh, osmosis, that's just diffusion, isn't it? Well, no, it's not, actually. It's quite different. And the reason it's different is that osmosis is diffusion for one thing, the small molecules, but not the other, the big molecules. So one set of molecules diffuses and the other does not. Imagine you've got yourself a container, and uh, I've drawn a dotted line in the middle, and this dotted line is what we're going to call in the biz as a semi-permeable membrane. And the semi-permeable membrane, you can kind of think as, um, imagine it's like a tennis racket. And so if you look down a tennis racket, and I haven't played tennis for a while, you've got uh, you know, a grid that looks something like that. And imagine you've got a tennis ball, and a tennis ball is big and fat, and if you hit it on the racket, it will just fall right off. But imagine now instead of a tennis ball, you took a teeny tiny little BB and a ball bearing, and of course as you drop it on the racket, it, well, you can see it's just going to go right on through and fall down on the other side. So small things can move through the tennis racket, and large things bounce off. So it's the same thing over here. Imagine you've got big fat molecules on one side. And, uh, you know, what might these be? They might be something like um, glucose or something like that. So glucose is, relatively speaking, a molecular heffalump. Okay, so glucose has a rough ring-like structure. Sometimes we write a little G in a hexagon. And the uh, glucose, we've got a lot on the left-hand side. So we can say the glucose concentration right is quite high and on the right hand side we can say the glucose concentration is quite low so you might imagine right that diffusion tells us that the concentration gradient is uh, we just fall down it so we go from high concentration to low so you might expect right that those glucose molecules will just kind of move from one side into the other side and the problem is is that they get to the membrane and they're too big and fat, so they just bounce right off. 
So uh, maybe a pointer is not very good here, but here we go. So they hit the membrane and they're just too fat to get through. They can't squeeze through. The ones on the other side, right, they can hit the membrane too. And again, they can't move through. So that means that those large molecules, this is almost always, by the way, the solute. Okay, most solutes are quite big. Uh, the solute can't get through the semipermal membrane. So what else do we have? Well, if we've got an aqueous solution, right, the aqueous means that you've got water. And so the water, right, is, oh, itty bitty. So, oh gosh, I'm going to have to, it's going to look like the blue measles right here. So I got a lot of water on this side. And notice on the other side, right, I don't have as much water because there's glucose taking up the room. So imagine I've just stockpiled my pantry with a bunch of soup, right? Now I got less room for everything else. So I can say my concentration of water is uh, pretty low on the left because there's a lot of solute. And remember, the water is the solvent. And on the other side, right, there's not as much solute. There's not as much glucose. So that means that there's tons of water in comparison. And so, oh, if it's just osmosis, we know that water will move from high concentration to low. So presumably it will move in the other direction. And uh, can that happen? Uh, well, you bet, actually. So the water is actually kind of skinny. So that little water molecule there, and I've got my laser pointer on. It can just whiz right through and bounce around. And uh, the same water molecules on the other side, right? They can whiz right through and bounce around. But the cool thing is, right, is that there's a lot of waters on the right, and there's not nearly as many on the left. So there's more likely to uh, see the water molecules basically go from right to left because there's tons of them on the right and they're less likely to go from left to right because of that. So you get a net osmotic flow moving from the right hand side to the left hand side. So the water is going to tend to rush from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration. And again, the water doesn't know it's supposed to do it, but if there's a lot more water on one side, right, and there's a lot less on the other, there's a lot more collisions with the water on this side with the membrane that lead to going through, and there's a lot fewer going out the other way. So the net result is water is going to move from right to left, and that is osmosis. So in summary then, for osmosis, the large solute molecules, they can't move through the semipermeable membrane. So they'd love to diffuse, but they can't. It's only those small molecules, like water, that can move through the membrane. And water will move from high water concentration to low water concentration. And we should sketch a diagram below and just kind of look at the second point again. So the water on the right has a high concentration. It's kind of odd to think about water itself having a concentration. But there you go. The water on the left-hand side has a low concentration. If we switch from the solute point of view, right, the solute has a low concentration on the right and a high concentration on the left. We would expect the solute to want to move from left to right, but it can't because it can't get through the membrane. The water instead, right, moves from right to left from high water to low water concentration. And so in many ways, right, it's almost as if the water is trying to move uh, to dilute the solute concentration. So that's the way some people think about it. But in reality, it's just moving from high to low water concentration. But if that helps you remember it, the water is trying to dilute the solute on the other side, then that's totally fine with me. Okay, let's see how this affects red blood cell. So imagine we've got a red blood cell, or RBC for short, in a solution. And our solution has a high solute concentration compared to the inside of the red blood cell that has a low solute concentration. And uh, the red blood cell behaves in many ways as a semi-permeable membrane. So that means that water can pass through the membrane, but solute molecules that are kind of large can't move through there. So if the solute concentration is high, that means that the water concentration must be low on the outside and vice versa. So if the solute concentration inside the red blood cell is low, there's plenty of room for water. We know then that uh, the water will diffuse through the red blood cell out into the solution. And uh, so essentially osmosis is diffusion of the solute that is small, that can fit through the membrane. And what will this do to the red blood cell? Well, if the red blood cell is losing water, it is going to shrivel up. So uh, my red laser pointer maybe doesn't show up so good. So you can see the red blood cells have really kind of shriveled up at this point here. And um, 
and this is definitely not good for them. So this kind of solution where the concentration of solute is high compared to what's on the inside, we refer to as a hyper. So hyper means above. Tonic refers to tonicity or concentration. So this is a hypertonic solution. So uh, I can't spell solution. So S U. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. So hyper. So just like hyperactive is more active than normal. Hypertonic means that it's got a higher concentration than normal, and this leads to uh, water essentially escaping the red blood cells, and they're shriveling up to uh, a much smaller size than they were before. Now, if we look at a situation where the solute concentration is low on the outside compared to the inside of the cell, which would be relatively high, then we can deduce from this that the water concentration on the outside has got to be pretty high compared to the inside. And uh, by the way, this kind of situation here we refer to as a hypotonic solution. So hypo means under, just like a hypodermic needle goes under the skin. A hypertonic solution is under, so uh, that is it's a lower concentration. Okay, it's under concentration if you like. And so what's going on here is the water concentration is high on the outside and it's low on the inside. So since the water molecules are small, they can diffuse in, right? So this process we call osmosis, when it's the small solvent molecules that dissolve. And if they go inside the red blood cells, then what happens to the red blood cells is they basically get bigger and bigger and bigger. So at the top of the screen, right, as water rushes in, they start to swell and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, at some point, right, so much water can go in, they can go pop. So if you look at this um, right here, right, these red blood cells have essentially burst open and uh, are not looking very healthy here at all. So this is called crenation, by the way. So this is crenation when this happens. And the last situation is if the solute concentration in and out is exactly the same, uh, that is called uh, isotonic, so isotonic. And if it's isotonic, that means that the water concentration has got to be the same inside as outside of the cell. So if that's the same, that means that water will go in and water will also go out, but on average it won't change the size. So there's not a net rush of water going in. And so the red blood cells just look like nice, plump, ordinary looking red blood cells. So that's an example of an isotonic solution. Some people have said that uh, the reason that Gatorade works so well is that Gatorade is a relatively isotonic solution. And so the water in this delicious uh, lime cucumber uh, Gatorade can move pretty easily in and out of the cells in our body. So it doesn't lead to either shriveling up and so dehydration or plumping up, which is definitely not a great thing for your cells to go pop. So isotonic solutions have been rumored or at least seem to be more effective at uh, hydrating you than solutions that are too concentrated or too dilute like pure water.